one of them. And at the building we're going through, I'm like, what are they going to do with this building? They're like, well, they can't destroy it. It's so polluted. They right. couldn't cart this stuff away, so they have to leave the building. And we're running around <laughs> with cameras in this building. But it's just, you know, the chemical revolution was, you know, the 50s. And it's like, we still can't get past that. We can't go, hey, we can create things that are even better. And we can still make money off of them. And we can still, I guess, the oil companies will have to control the market, you know, because that's how they design it. And that's what I think they're afraid of. They're afraid of giving up that power and changing it to a different paradigm. And, you know, one, one way people can do that is by educating others and by getting healthy, you know. Well, that's right. And, and, and what you're talking about are, are, are changes that are so disruptive to the, the balance of, well, they call it the balance of power and, and technology. And it, to me, it's completely out of balance. But they're so disruptive that it would it just, it, they can't even foresee the kind of change. And the only thing they see uh, in that change process is all bad for them. Mm -hmm. So they'll do They're just afraid about, of it. Oh, absolutely. They're afraid of change. They're afraid of that kind of change. They don't know what would come of it, but they're pretty sure that they would lose most of their ground that mm -hmm. they have, uh, that they control. They're and, like little kids standing on the high dive going, if I jump, it's all over. And I'll, you don't realize when you jump, you just land in water. Well, that's exactly right. Uh, I mean, I know some people that, that have some technologies about hydrogen and things like this, and it's almost, it's virtually impossible to get that commercialized right now because mm -hmm. no one is willing to take the first step. No one's willing to take those first steps that are so necessary to get this stuff going. And you and I both have heard stories about, well, there's all kinds of alternative energy technologies, mm -hmm. this and that, that are stymied before they ever really get started. Well, the patents are bought up and then they're sealed away in locations that we'll never get to see. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I'm sure that there's working generators in all these houses of the people that own the patents now. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. they're having free energy. I have no doubt about that. Yeah. And, but... It's so disruptive that these, these uh, uh, as, as George calls them, rascals will do just about anything in their power to prevent these kind of changes from happening. Right. And totally, it's unfortunate totally agree. For, it is unfortunate. It's unfortunate for us. Yeah, I agree. Now, you're in Colorado. I am. And you guys are working on a great experiment right now. And uh, it started in January. And you're not even involved in, in the marijuana industry at all. No. Nope. But I have to ask, I mean, as a businessman, you talk to other businessmen in Colorado, probably some who are in the in industry. What are they telling you? Well, they're, they're loving it because their sales are out of, out of sight. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and Colorado itself is, is going to experience marijuana t tourism. I think the legalization of that kind of thing at this point is, I mean, there are people on both sides of the coin. Some people will go, it needs to be legalized because that way you take away all of the, uh, uh, you know, the underground economy that's associated with it. It becomes more out front. It's, and you can tax it. You can tax yeah. it. And boy, they do tax it. So I think it's 22% tax on marijuana sales. Mm -hmm. the, the state's reaping some pretty good benefits out of it. I'm not, I'm not a user, you know, of, of pot, you know, but I know lots of people are, and it doesn't matter to me. I think that that controversial issue is going to play out nationally. We have, I think there's five more states that have it on their ballot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Big Tobacco was in this game 40 years ago. You know, they wanted to do vending machines. And right, like yeah, that. they were ready. They were ready. They were ready. To Never happened like, like they thought it would. Mm -mm. And now you... Uh, it's kind of interesting the way it's coming to play because it's all these small-time independent companies that have sprung up that are doing this now. And I respect that. I think it's, a, I think it's great that, that it's not so controlled by these big, large corporations. And that's what I, I see as the downfall of it going to many more states is that eventually a big player is going to get in the game like a Monsanto and go, well, now it's time to start making the seed that grows in two months uh. and produces THC that's 50 times powerful than what we have today. And we're gonna buy everybody up and all these small uh, small commercial farms and we're gonna buy them up and then have one under a giant agribusiness umbrella, which I could see coming 10, 15 years from now. Yeah, so I, I think I, the, the time to get, if you're gonna get in the game is, is, is you gotta get in quick with these right, things before, right. which is good when, when you're a, a single person or a small group, you can be more nimble and make those changes. Um, Absolutely, in, in I agree with you. I think that you're looking 10 years, you're gonna see, at, at least the way things move 
at the present time and at the present pace. I think that that's what you'll see is more consolidation in that industry and you'll see bigger players uh, on a national scene. And get back to GMO, Steve. What What is new in, in that arena? A lot of people, um, a lot of our viewers are really into that as a topic of consideration where they go out and, and you know, they, they make videos, they protest, they get other people involved, they educate. Mm -hmm. um, what's new on that front? Well, baby steps. It's finally, it's all about the labeling right now, I think, mm -hmm. uh, for the consumer. Right. You want to know what's in your food. So you got baby steps. I think it was uh, New Hampshire finally got a labeling law. We've got you know, more and more people becoming more and more aware. Uh, but you still have so many people that don't even know what a GMO is, genetically modified organisms. You know, what is that? Why is it bad? And there's, it's a whole educational process. Uh, Jeffrey Smith has been, you know, mm -hmm. the leader, I think, in that. Dr. Oz's wife is, is heavily into the, the anti-GMO, you know, no GMOs, no GMOs. And a lot of it, too, is there, there's just been some uh, lack of coordination between organic certifi certified organic products, mm -hmm. and now you have non-GMO certified products. And people are confused. A lot of people think that non-GMO is better than organic when organic, certified organic products cover the whole gamut. Mm -hmm. They have to be non-GMO. No pesticides, you know, the, on and on and on. It's a highly regulated uh, uh, certification process. But now. a non-GMO could have tons of pesticides in it. Absolutely. And be grown that's, in depleted soils that's and lots exactly of fertilizers. That's exactly right. Exactly right. You know, there's no uh, stopping these guys. The, you know, it's a marketing ploy. Non-GMO uh, can mean, uh, uh, you know, chemical fertilizers, uh, uh, weed killers, all kinds of stuff. Whereas organic, you can't use any of that. Right. You know, that's very, very regulated. I mean, we're, we're actually an organic certified facility. So we have the, the paperwork trail in organic certification is exhaustive, extensive. Uh, it wears you out. But is it worth it? In the oh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, we're all about transparency in our company, and I think every company should be about that. Uh, I think that everybody should label their products truthfully. Mm -hmm. They should uh, uh, tell, their, tell the customer what's in it. Uh, what it means to them, what it, you know, it's just a whole... Uh, it's like they tell us, what have you got to hide? That's right. You know, they always that's tell right. us that yeah, so yeah, they can yeah, snoop yeah. And, and look at our emails and track our phone conversations. Sure. What have they got to hide? I mean, yeah. if these yeah. products are so good, just put, just put a label on it and just, let, let people decide. That's exactly right. And I'm, I, I would like to have more and more disclosure. I would like, uh, you know, people to open their mind up to... The reality that, that, I mean, the reality of these whole uh, green revolution type uh, propaganda exercises, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, the green revolution started in the 50s and it starved entire populations. Uh, GMOs, same type deal, m much more dangerous yeah. in my mind. I mean, it's a, it's a threat to... Uh, our existence as a species to me. I, and there's scientific evidence that comes out all the time about GMOs, and yet it's all discredited, you know, in the media. Right, a few months later, well, maybe they didn't quite, uh, they didn't quite have enough rats in the study that had tumors, so we can't say that there were tumors, even though there's pictures of tumored rats who are eating GMO corn, but then they try to discredit Oh. That story that came out, and that was sure. and that was a big story. That was sure. something, that, you know. And it's just every time we we find something, we're like, ah, oh, we got you. They come out, oh no, 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 fluoride's good for you. Oh it's right, good. right, right. Fluoride's good for you. It's yeah. good for your teeth. Yeah, you it's know? good for your teeth. It helps your teeth. <laughs> my dentist says, and we have the the mayor of Austin said, well, I talked to my dentist, and he said. Oh, oh, American Dental Association dentist, right. These right. guys aren't programmed. No, no, from, absolutely not. From an early age. Uh, the, kit, uh, the conditioning is, is incredible. I mean, the, the, the extent of the conditioning never ceases to amaze me. I've, I've talked to people that were in California during the big GMO vote, the mm -hmm. labeling vote out there. And they said, well, we voted against it because it was going to raise the cost of our food. And I was like, how 
Is yeah. that going to happen? They they claim with with printing new labels because they'll have to print special labels for California, and that's going to cost so much money. It's going to raise the price up. Uh, yet they spent millions yes. and millions to and millions it. of dollars to yeah. fight it. To fight it. They yeah. could have printed a label for every product for years. You know. I think that we have to become better at responding to their tricks mm -hmm. and. And I think that that's where we, as a, as a movement, I guess, if you want to call it a movement, have really come up short is education, education, education. Try to educate the people, trying to find the forums to educate people. As you say, you don't think it's gone far enough. I think we've made big strides in educating people with GMOs because five years ago. Oh, well, yeah. You mean, know, on a comparative you basis. Never sure. have heard of this. This no. was not have been a controversy. Jeffrey Smith's been talking about it for a while. But it wasn't even on the radar with most people. That's right. And, you know, that was the great thing. Um, Alex sent a crew out there to interview Jeffrey. And I, I've even read his book, Seeds of Deception. And just oh. the process of how they make these GMOs. I mean, just read about the gene gun, the gold-plated oh. gene gun that Boom. literally shoots genes together. And you're yeah. like, what? This yeah. is how they do it? No, it's not. They're not taking electron no, no, microscopes no, 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 no. and, like, getting the right pieces. You don't know what you're getting with that grasshopper gene oh, that yeah. helps your your grass, you know, uh, it'd be impervious to weeds. You don't, you have no idea what you're getting. In, That's in, in exactly that. for a bunch of control freaks. Yeah, they have, they no, have no control. control. No, <laughs> they're, they're literally process. shooting genes with a gun That's into right. other genes, and that's how they're splicing them together. And it's it, it literally is it's mad amazing. scientist world. Oh, it's mad scientists. Yeah, you know, and the guy that that exposed the whole GMO thing in Europe when they were trying to get the potato thing uh, through the GMO potatoes, mm -hmm. he. He got canned. Oh, yeah. Just immediately. Very, very quickly. I mean, they just like that. Hushed him up and told him that we're going to sue you if you say anything else about GMS. Yeah. He, and, he, and he did have the courage to still come out and speak, but, yeah, I mean, he was gagged. They do not want this information getting out Absolutely there. not. I, I, it, well, I mean, four or five companies control most of the seed stock mm -hmm. now in the world. Uh, that, that's, to me, uh, that's criminal. Yeah. You should not be able to do it. And it's so insidious the way they go about this. You know, most of the uh, small uh, guys that used to, they have these little machines that go out and they take part of a farmer's crop and they shake the seed out mm -hmm. so that he'll have seed for his next crop. Right. Well, they wallet, as we say in Texas, wallet whip them. They start suing these little guys right. saying that you are shaking our seed out of that crop. That's patented. That's patent. You owe us money now. Yeah, you yeah. owe us money, and they just sue them until the point where we got they they have to give up. They have yeah. no more money. I mean, these guys make thirty or forty thousand dollars a year. Right. You know, and and it's just it is infuriating to read these kind of stories to me. What's even worse is they'll go after farmers if they have a Monsanto crop here and you don't have Monsanto, but it gets pollinated and starts growing it. Not by any fault of your own. They'll come out and see you for patent infringement. All right. I mean, Cross -pollination. it is insane it's, what they do to these There people. are so many cases. I, I, I attend several forums where some of the guys that are actually fighting Monsanto uh, because of this cross-pollination, you know, mm -hmm. these lawsuits, the wallet whipping and things like that. And unfortunately, I mean, there are too many, way too many losses in the court system for this 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 criminal activity that Monsanto is is engaged in, and it, it I, I don't know where it's going to stop or or if it ever will. I hope it does, but the, right now the court system is clearly on the side of the corporate interest. That's who funds the judges. <laughs> That's we right. did a report on that. Judges are are funded like NASCAR drivers almost, and it's oh, with yeah. giant corporations, oh, so they're always going to side. With absolutely, them. and I think that it's like you said, we have come a long way. We got we, there's a there's a longer road ahead. I totally agree. We'll leave it on that for All now. Right. Thanks for joining us, Steve Thanks, Sankler, Rob. from Inter Botanicals. It. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern. Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. 
discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a...